And hi, greetings. It's Pat Mishu here from Life on the Road. I wanted to share with you some of my success habits and some of the tips because uh, I've been on the road for about 10 days now. I'm on the road for a month this trip. And while I'm posting photos, I'm getting comments and questions and feedback about life on the road and particularly life on the other side of the country when you're on the road for a month. So I wanted to break it down for you and share with you, as I always do in th on three tracks, three ideas for how I do this and keep the energy up and stay focused, keep the business going and also be present at the same time. So I want to talk to you on three things, the personal approach, the professional approach and the organizational approach. Now, organizationally, one of the reasons I am on the road for a month is because I have work commitments on the West Coast, but they didn't all fall chronologically, you know, day after day. It would have meant, if I didn't schedule it this way, it would have meant being on the West Coast, going back to the East Coast, coming back to the West Coast, going back to the East Coast. That's not efficient when it comes to time zones and adjusting. It's not efficient with being on airplanes. It takes a day travel either way. That's just not efficient use of my time and energy. So my decision right at the get-go as I saw this coming together was to make sure that I just planned it all out, took charge, took control, and created this month on the road the way I wanted it to be. And so the other benefit to that is when I travel, I have a phenomenal neighbor, Mike, who I call my house manager. He's retired. So when I leave for a period of a month, then he gets a list from me. It's kind of like having a husband, but not really. And so he gets a list and I get all my house renovations and repairs and upkeep and all of that done by Mike right next door while I'm away. So I know my house is in good hands too. And who wants to live through that stuff while it's happening? So, all right, so that's a bit operational and technical. Let me talk to you about the personal side of things. The travel can be mm, uh, demanding these days. It can be like wear and tear on the body. And so, again, I focus on my five things when I'm on the road. And as long as I'm present and conscious and stay with these five things, when I'm on the road, I do good, I feel good, I look good. The first one is sleep. So I always manage to get at minimum six to eight hours sleep a night, if not more. But for sure around the eight hour mark. So it doesn't matter what time zone I'm in, I'm present, I go to bed at 10, that's it. Then I'm up at six or seven, depending on the day. Sleep is number one. Hydration, I've always, always, always got water near me and I hydrate constantly, especially when I travel. So that's critically important. Nutrition is important. In fact, I just had my snack here because I was hungry. So I always have my nutrition with me. Upside down, that doesn't help you read it, does it? I have my nutrition with me, so I just had half a protein bar. And so I travel that way. I have my shakes with me, my supplements, my protein bars, for especially when I'm traveling during a meal period so I don't succumb to some of the crappy food in the airports. All right, so I've got the sleep, the hydration, the nutrition, exercise is absolutely critical. I, I told you on an earlier Facebook post that the, the running shoes and the jump rope and the workout clothes are always the first to go into the suitcase. Now, here's what I do, though, to keep it fresh and interesting when I travel. I always look at different types of classes or activities that I can get involved in. And so right now, as I'm in this particular location, I went to a whole different yoga class yesterday. Oh my gosh, I thought I was in good shape. And this instructor is 71 years old, <laughs> very inspiring. So, and then I went to a new type of uh, yoga, Pilates, it was called the bar method exercise. So I'm always trying different things, but I also get in my 10,000 steps a day. And so, and the last piece and how I end my day is with meditation. 
that's what really lulls me into a great sleep that and the fresh air so that's on the personal side of things and i always make sure i'm having fun listen if i'm not having fun then this is not worth doing so fun is a key element it's it's probably my five tips plus one bonus all right professionally people ask me how do i keep it together uh, and this is with respect to me as a career professional as a speaker as an author as a business coach I set up a schedule. It's just that simple. When I'm in my home office, I have a schedule. When I'm on the road, I have a schedule. And so I set up a schedule and I sit down and I stay focused and I get my work done. And sure, you know, like you, I have my phone with me on the road, but it's not glued to my hip. It's not. My work is not life or death. And so I make a point of setting up a schedule. Now, the other key thing is there is an out of office message on my email. So people know, the general public know, when they write an email, they get a message that I'm away, but here's who and how to contact in my absence. Now, my clients always know how to get hold of me, so I am available to them because this is not a vacation. It is a working trip. So make sure you've got a professional out-of-office message on, and I mean professional, not just a one-liner. So take a look at that in, in your own instance. So, and then I have my schedule, I have my work schedule when I sit down and I get work done no matter where I am. And then if I'm in some exotic places, like right now I'm in Sonoma County, I'm not working all day every day, are you kidding me? This is like paradise. And so I focus when I'm working, I'm working. And when I go play, I play. And when I exercise, I exercise. So learn to be in the moment, learn to be in the present and stay focused and put your timer on because all of you know that is how I get things done. All right, the other piece to it is uh, organizational. Now, there's some, under that piece, I wanted to add some safety tips because I'm often asked about travel as a single professional woman, what do I do? And I have really um, focused on this a lot since my very best friend a few months ago, who also travels, was away from home in a hotel room and uh, it turns out that she was having a major headache and was having a brain bleed. And we've had conversations about this since her incident. So here's what I do, and these are some special tips for you. Nobody talks about this. When I go to uh, a hotel, or even you know when I'm staying at a colleague's place, I always make sure, first thing, to tell them where my emergency contact information is. So that will be where my passport's located, where my health card is located, and the name and number of my brother who is my emergency contact. So whether I'm staying with a friend, a relative, or I'm in a hotel, I will tell them at the front desk that I am traveling alone. And, you know, and so should something happen and you have to come into my room and something has happened, that's where my emergency contact information is. I know that this is a life-saving tip for many of you and we don't hear people talking about it. So I wanted to be sure to share that with you. So I've told you about the house manager, I've told you about the travel insurance because I'm out of the country. So it's really important that whoever you're with knows where your travel insurance information is. And then, of course, I have a phenomenal team. What can I say? Without my team, uh, I, I would be working all the time. I have a phenomenal team. You know, uh, Denise keeps it all together in the bigger picture, and Cheryl is right there just giving her all, as always, and Susan is doing a phenomenal job in coaching with the clients. And I have set up some Skype meetings with my clients in South Africa, etc. But for the most part, I will tell you, my team does a phenomenal job. If you think you can do all this by yourself and be on the road for a month, you're crazy. You cannot. Everything from my house manager through to my housekeeper through to my team, it takes a village. It takes a village. So there you go. That's what life on the road is like for me. That's how I stay happy, healthy, focused, wealthy, keep the business going, but also it fills my heart and I go to beautiful places and I've worked hard to create this. So when you're looking at my photos, follow me on Facebook. There's really great stuff coming up. But then you'll see it's like hashtag watch me, hashtag I created this, I love my life. You can create this too if it is something that you want. All right, thanks for being with me. Stay tuned. I'll be back again with more business building tips and like today, sometimes on a holistic basis. Thanks for being here. Bye, everyone.